Hey there everyone, it's Rob Ryder on Thursday, May 8th, 2014. And um, we're looking at a uh, certificate of baptism for myself. So actually I am Robert Allen Rutluski. At least I was baptized, such. And you can see it shows my I'm the child of Delbert Rutluski and Elsie Dorsey. And one of the things you would ask yourself, well, how come your mom's name isn't the same as your dad's? If you were somebody like me, you would ask those questions. And you'll find out that this is the same way that it is on your civil documents, such as your birth documents. Right? So in the baptism, they got your mom and dad, or they could have. I'm just saying, this is a Catholic church, Roman Catholic church, where in 1958, apparently, I was baptized, and they know that my parents are Delbert Rutluski and Elsie Dorsey. Like they're not married. As far as I know, my mom and dad were married in a Catholic church. If anybody should know they were married in a church, it would be the church. Well, this is interesting because um, in the Gospel of Thomas, it says, number 105, And Jesus said, Whoever knows the father and the mother will be called the child of a whore. Whoever knows the father and mother will be called child of horror. And then we have these canon laws of the Roman Catholic Church. And I, before I go any further, you know, whether you agree with the Roman Catholic Church or not is not my problem. And this is really geared to those who are in the Catholic Church who I hope are drawn to this. Or if you're already in the Catholic Church or you know a Catholic, have them look at it. Because I want to show them what is in the canon law of the Catholic Church. And that really we should all be citizens of the Holy See, and we wouldn't be living out here in the world under what's basically called color of law. And if you haven't studied the law, you probably don't know what that is, but it looks like the law, but it isn't. And it happens all the time because nobody ever does any paperwork. They never sign the dotted line. You've never done anything with anybody else in the government or banking or whatever where they sign a contract with you. Unless you're in business doing it, but as a person, you, you, it doesn't happen. It's called a unilateral contract, and unilateral contracts can only be used for gifts and donations, not for business transactions. And if you're buying a house, for instance, well, that's certainly a business transaction. Why didn't the bank sign your contract? Right? This is a, a whole deep end of stuff that I don't want to get into. I already, I already had. We're going to look at the church side specifically. Because they have these concordance with the church, all the, the nation states, that if the church creates church property, the state will automatically recognize church property as being the churches or under church's uh, um, jurisdiction and protection. And at the end of the day, that what this document really is doing right here is uh, this is making you, is the start of you becoming a church. Uh, an earthen vessel for the Holy Spirit because they baptize the cornerstone of water and then they concentrate or consecrate the completed church christened it in oil and so in a Catholic um, ceremony as an infant you're baptized as an infant with water sometime later about the age of nine or so you are uh, confirmed and get consecrated by a bishop and consecrated with oil that's the consecration of your church, your temple to the Holy Spirit. Well, but look at this. So back to the can of law. See, this is the problem. If you've never listened to me before, I do get off on tangents. And so i got a couple more I need to get out. But first this. Canon Law, 1983, go to Canon Law for Roman Rite, 877, subsection 2. In the case of a child of an unmarried mother, the mother's name is to be entered in her maternity is if her maternity is publicly known or if either in writing or before two witnesses she freely asked that it, this be done similarly the name of the father is to be entered if his paternity is established either by some public document or by his own declaration in the presence of a parish priest and two other witnesses in all other cases other than an unmarried mother because this is all everything above this is just about an unmarried mother in all other cases like a married mother, the name of the baptized person is to be registered without any, without any indication of the names of the father or the parents. And yet, right here on this certificate of baptism, 
which isn't necessarily the registration of baptism. This is just a certificate taking information off the registration. I, I haven't seen the registration. It's part of where we're headed with this, as I put a request in to get the records examined. Um, but as you can see, this, standing the way it does now, shows my mom and dad not being married, and it certainly um, fulfills the uh, what the Gospel of Thomas said in number 105, whoever knows the father and the mother will be called the child of a whore. This is happening to you right now. You've been given a civil disability of being illegitimate and living in a world that's run under Old Testament law. Not a good place to be. You're just a slave. But that isn't really enough, right? It gets even more crazy. Now read this. This is Vatican II, uh, one of the uh, decrees, and this on the missionary work, Ad Gentis, se section 10, really near the beginning, the church sent by Christ to reveal and to communicate the love of God to all men and nations is aware that there is still remains a gigantic missionary task for her to accomplish. Get ready for this now. For the gospel message has not yet or hardly yet been heard by two million human beings. Why? Only two million human beings have heard the gospel according to a decree <laughs> which is a lawful order out of a court of the Vatican under the decree of Adjentis. The gospel message has not yet, now this is like in the mid-60s, right? So in the mid-60s has not yet or hardly yet been heard by two million human beings and there's six point whatever billion on the face of the earth. I don't know if there were a billion Catholics back in the mid-60s, but they were probably close to it. So reading on, so they are formed into a large distinct groups by permanent cultural ties, ancient religious traditions, and firm bonds of necessity. So of these two million, they're formed into dis large and distinct groups. One group, some of these men, are followers of one of the great religions. Others remain strangers to the very knowledge of God, while still others expressly deny his existence and sometimes even attack it. So of the two million people that have had the honor to read to hear the gospel they're broken into three groups and only one group is a follower another group's the strangers another group are the haters well who is it that got to hear the gospel because I don't believe that I'm one of the two million and I don't believe if you're listening to this you were either unless you're the Pope and if you are your holiness thanks for listening the church, in order to be able to offer all men a mystery of salvation and life brought by God, must implant herself in these groups for the same motive which led Christ to bind himself in virtue of his incarnation to certain social, cultural, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so first we got him calling you a bastard, illegitimate, and you're, again, your civil documents are the same way. So um, a marriage license or certificate isn't considered a vital record. Uh, digressing just slowly or shortly here, Roe found out in her county in Illinois, she called the Vital Statistics Office of the state, found out that the guy who's the county clerk is also the administrator or the uh, um, appointed as the the local register, and that the district they had was 45. That was the number. And she went down to talk to the lady at Vital Statistics and was talking to her and said, yeah, that was 45. Now we have two, 45 and some other number, 89, and she went quiet. This was like last week. And Roe went again today and asked her a little bit more. Not today. It was yesterday. And asked her a little bit more. And this time she says, well, yeah, what, what they have is um, in one group, I think it's in, in group 89, they moved deaths first, deaths, and then births, and left in 45 only one. And guess what it is? fetal deaths fetal deaths and the lady made it quite sure and they're not going to let you see those records alright fetal deaths there is a, a, a vital record section called fetal deaths in the vital record section and I'm sure that somehow we're listed in there because right we, we all know that if you've been following this stuff that you're considered a decedent or you got some kind of other civil disability, depending on what they need you to have and what jurisdiction it is. Um, but it's all done with color of law, and color of law is a hate crime, and a hate crime is a crime against humanity and civil rights violation, and, 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 all sorts of things. 
and uh, so I did some earlier videos on these subjects and just the one before this was on uh, federal federal question jurisdiction in other words what gives the lowercase federal court jurisdiction in a court case and um, what it is is if it's a federal law that gives them the jurisdiction and these federal laws one of them are acts of Congress and there's an act of Congress called the Civil Rights Act in fact there's numerous acts of Congress and they all talk about somebody using color of law against you as it being a hate crime crime against humanity blah 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 well, what they did here by making you a bastard is a crime against humanity. So they're going to fix it, or they're going to go to prison. This is the wonderful thing. See, this, is, this, this isn't bad that this is here. This is good that this is here, in my opinion, because we're going to make the church fix their records, which I think is easier than trying to get the state to fix their records. And by the church fixing their records, it will, through these treaties, get the state to change their record. And you will get your sui juris legal personality that we're all supposed to have. So they made us a bastard. They haven't told us what the gospel is. What else haven't they done? Well, there's one more thing. Here's another canon, 842. Uh, section 2. The sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and blessed, blessed Eucharist so complement each other that all three are required for full Christian initiation. So to be a full Christian initiate, you had to be baptized, confirmed, and receive the Eucharist. That don't sound so, you know, for a Catholic, that would just be normal, right? You were baptized. I went to a Catholic school for six years, so I, I got to go through all the sacramental ceremonies. And so then about the age of seven, which like second grade, um, you go to confirmation, or excuse me, you go to Holy Communion for the first time, and, uh, and also to uh, confession. Or reconciliation and then um, at the age of nine which is like fourth grade you go through confirmation after you reach the age of reason the age of reason is seven years old and so you've been baptized confirmed received the Eucharist you should be a full Christian initiate well if you were that would make you a member of the church and as a member of the church it would when we look at this stuff deeper or if you look at some of the stuff I've done before because I don't know if I'll get to it today you have the right to be uh, a citizen of the church because the church has its own nation. It's called the nation. It's the Holy See. The Catholic Church is the government of the Holy See, and the Holy See are the Christians within the Holy See, and they should have an office within the Holy See. It's what was said would happen in Vatican II, and nobody's ever accepted the office or whatever. But part of it is you had to be a full Christian initiate. And the reason is because on the back of this baptism certificate, there's there's nothing in communion for me. It's blank. All right, this is that's an that's an omission on a record or an error. Well, I guess we'd have to, you know, legalize what that is. But what it shows is there's not a it's not been checked off, right? So all the boxes haven't been checked. Therefore, I can't be a member of the church. But I have the confirmation, which you cannot have until you've had communion in the Catholic Church. That is the custom of when I was going through the through the church. And of course, the baptism's on the front, right? So this says I was baptized, and there's the church's seal. I was baptized as a bastard on the 18th of uh, September, 1958. And so, even though that wasn't bad enough, you know, make me a bastard coming into the system then they're not going to complete my record for it to go to the Secretariat of the Vatican City State to have uh, to have myself registered basically as church property because I'm an earthen vessel it's going to be carrying the Holy Spirit it was given to me at uh, confirmation I became a, a earthen vessel a host of the Holy Spirit So, what I did, um, is I decided to write the Chancellor at my diocese, that was the first thing. And the reason I'm writing the Chancellor is the Chancellor is the CEO of the diocese, right? He's the one that runs the administrative office. On the website, he's the Administrator slash, or Chancellor slash CFO, in an office called Administration and Finance, right? So. Um, 
in the church the bishop has ordinary power he's got all he's got all three powers he's got legislative power he can adjudicate and he can um, execute right he's got all three powers but he delegates those powers out and so the one that runs the office as the chief executive of the office of the diocese is the chancellor the bishop's right-hand man now the bishop also has a vicar general who also has ordinary power but his ordinary powers come to him through the pope not through the bishop I don't know how that all plays in but all I know is this the guy who's in the office that says it's church administration is the chancellor so I'm gonna take it to him and so I did and this is just part of my public record of what I've sent out because I'm not I'm gonna remove the plank from the eye of the Roman Catholic Church before they try to remove somebody else's speck it's just the way it should be so we need to fix our we need to tidy up our own house and it starts with the records and guess who's in charge of records the Chancellor Chancellor I need to inform you of a situation that will require your execution and enforcement of canon law possibly the involvement of competent ecclesiastic form perhaps even a nod from the Vicar of Christ the errors and omissions I am about to make you aware of must surely exist for a specific reason. I believe that reason is so that they may be corrected, initiating a sea of changes resulting in the faithful's liberation from bondage and their empowerment to conform the temporal order to the will of the Lord. It's a great day. By the power of the spoken word memorialized by ink on paper, you will be releasing the Christ in us into the world. Just change the records. Just change the records. That's all you need to do. You don't need to change records. You need to correct the records. That's the thing. There's nothing wrong with the records other than they're incorrect, and you have the power to correct them. But verily I say, that which I tell you now is from this time forward considered a crime against humanity, unless and until the church corrects its records. One being cognizant of a crime of this magnitude, with the authority to administer the correction to the error or omission and refusing or delaying execution is committing a misprison here on earth and is an enemy of God. Canon 24 No custom which is contrary to divine law can acquire the force of law. 1.2 billion Catholics are counting on you to acknowledge the errors and omissions on sacramental records. See to their correction and end our civil death. Now brother in Washington State, Jeff, he called the frickin' Archbishop or Archdiocese of Seattle and talked to a canon lawyer, some lady, some she was a nun from a religious order, canon lawyer, and said, "Hey, what?" So he was talking to her about this canon, Canon Eight Seven Seven, Section Two, which says a child of an unmarried mother, the mother's name and the father's name go on the document. And I'm not sure how he worded it to her, but her response was, well, the church assumes that, you're, that your parents are married, and they've been doing it that way for centuries. Okay, that's fine, right? That's her answer. Well, what did she just say? She just said that, what she said is they just do it that way. That's a custom, right? Because unless you're telling me that I am a bastard, and so therefore there was a mistake in the record, because I'm not a bastard, then fix the record. But in law, what matters is what the record says. What the record says under seal, and this is under church seal, and this says that I'm a bastard. And I'm sure that 1.2 billion other Catholics got the same problem. But no custom which is contrary to divine law can acquire the force of law. So we need them to change the record. Certain record-keeping policies of the Catholic Church and its lack of full disclosure of vital information has aided in the enslavement of mankind and enforce disappearance of persons by usurpers of civil office using color of law and simulated legal process. This activity is a crime against humanity and subject to prosecution under Roman statute in the International Criminal Court, Vatican City law, civil rights laws of any nation, and of course canon law. Errors and omissions and records administered by the Catholic Church mimic in many ways the same disregard for key fiduciary duties by color of law civil authority. We live in a society where nobody is elected to the office. Yes, I know they're standing there. Yes, I know when you go to court, there's a judge there, and there's the clerk, and there's somebody standing behind the treasurer's desk, and but none of them were elected. They didn't follow the proper procedure. I did numerous videos on this, showed the evidence, 
showed their election paperwork. They're not elected. It's what's called color of law, and it is a crime against humanity. The enforced disappearance of a person. That's a crime against humanity. Right? They took my legitimate... I should have a sui juris civil personality, because I am of age. I can take care of myself. I can take care of my own situation. But they have. They've given us this civil defect so that you need to have a guardian. And everything they do is for your protection. They'll tell you that. First, with a lack of full disclosure. Vatican II decree on missionary work. We already read this, right? This is where it talks about for the gospel message has not yet or hardly yet been heard by two million human beings. Somebody explain that to me. Chancellor, what the heck are a billion plus Catholics listening to if not the gospel message? Only two million human beings have heard it, ever. Of those still denied, some still denied the message. By what authority is the gospel message being kept secret? In the name of the Lord Emmanuel, the Christ Jesus, I demand the gospel message be released to the world so it can be preached by his lay apostolate. Get behind me, Satan. Let's see the book or the word, whatever it is. I want to hear it. Anything written is just a memorial to the event, and I'm not one who believes everything that only what's in the Bible is what there is. That's obviously incorrect. There's much more to it. People would like you to think that's all there is, but... No, there is something missing. I heard the Pope Francis himself say in a, in a talk here in the last year when he was exhorting the clergy to preach the f entire gospel. Entire gospel. So, they, you know, I don't know what's missing, but we're going to find out. So, second point. It's obvious from various decrees since Vatican II, an office for the laity has been established, including citizenship and sui juris legal personality, recognized under international law. Officers of the Holy See are its citizens, and, lay, and a lay apostolate is an office of the Holy See, a Christi Fidels, Fidelis, I guess it is, Fidelis. And so there was a thing written called the Pontifical Council for the Lady, and in there, one of the many wonderful things it said is, the draft presented in 1964 stated, it seems very opportune that a special office, sui juris, of the laity should be set up within the Holy See. For those drafting the text, a pood was to mean of the Holy See, not an office of lay organizations close to the Holy See. Of the Holy See, within the Holy See as a lay apostolate, a, a, an apostle, a pilgrim church out in the world preaching the gospel. They have an office for you within the Holy See. With the proper execution of a few sac sacramental record, not only would its citizenship by way of office within the Holy See be established, but also civil authority within the world's nation states would be noticed to update their records in accordance with already established concordance and other binding agreements. Our person will become our church and registered within the Catholic Church. Our earthen vessel, the temple home of the Holy Spirit, considered our church property as a member of the body of Christ and under the governance and protection of the Holy See. Well, all they got to do is follow their laws. And in their laws, if somebody wants to bring a complaint against you, they have to swear to it. And nobody swears to anything in this color of law situation that we're in. They don't allow God in the courtroom. Uh, 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 an attorney at the Federal District Court in Chicago told Roe that this week. Oh, they don't allow God in the courtroom. Don't bring God up in the courtroom. No. She went on to say they don't have any criminal cases at the District Court. Well, then what in the hell are people going to jail for, for IRS issues, if there's no criminal cases? You weren't charged with a crime. According to this attorney, they don't have criminal cases here. How are people getting five years in prison in a system where they don't have any criminal cases. Unfortunately, this leads us to one of the places the devil hides in the church, and the devil is in the church. We've got Freemasons, they're going to have to go. In, uh, in the details, with half-truths and incomplete memorials to events, they'd never finish the paperwork. 
These simple forms become instruments of enslavement, witness to an Ill illegitimate birth, lacking in substance to confer the blessings of Christianity. Right? Because they didn't <laughs> check the box, I don't get my citizenship within the Holy See. That was a gift. It's what Jesus Christ left us when he established the church. Oh. Okay, our baptism confirms our civil death. And we already talked about this. The unmarried mother figure. Chancellor, lack of full disclosure by the Catholic Church that a child will be seen as a bastard if mother's and father's names is registered as part of the baptism. Allow those who wish to use Old Testament and Protestant legalism to invoke Deuteronomy 23-2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. All right, people want to, people want you to believe that you have Judeo-Christian beliefs and you can't be a Christian and have Judeo beliefs because Jews don't believe that Christ was God. There ain't no such thing as Judeo-Christian beliefs. You're either a Jew or you're a Christian. And there really aren't any Jews left because Christ stomped the shit out of them in 70 AD and according to, uh, I think it's Josephus, was the guy's name, was the uh, historian of the time, lived through it when he saw the beast come out of the north because he was in a city north of Jerusalem last man standing captured by the guy who became emperor eventually taken with him as an interpreter or somebody to work with with the people in Jerusalem so they didn't have to destroy the city of Jerusalem like they were destroying all these other cities it didn't work but one of the things they did is when they destroyed the temple in Jerusalem they burned all the pedigree books, right? Nobody knows who their daddy is anymore. They used to be they could go all the way back to Adam. Now nah, nobody can. So technically there aren't any Old Testament Jews anymore. They don't exist. All of these people that claim to be Jews have could, could be descendants, but they can't say they're pure and they can't follow their chain back to Adam so they don't have their... Uh, this is where Christ said that he was going to uh, leave them desolate. He destroyed their records. Yeah, well, they're still around, right? Or at least the religion is, and they're awful mad about it. So they would they would like to believe that Christ never came here, and we're still under, or that the Messiah never appeared. So we're still under Old Testament law, and Deuteronomy 23.2 applies, and that means a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, and both your civil and baptismal records show that you're a bastard. Oh, church record keeping just contributed to a violation of Roman article, uh, Roman statute, Article 7. Those are the crimes against humanity, such as enslavement, persecution, and forced disappearance of person. The list goes on. Those are the ones that are used in the International Criminal Court. You have allowed the enemies of the Lord, the Antichrist, left desolate by Christ himself. Who's the Antichrist? Anybody who says Jesus Christ isn't God is the Antichrist. So said the Apostle John, to persecute the children of God. Is our record courted illegitimacy the basis to claim original sin? Because we were registered as bastards? Was there full disclosure given to the faithful? How can a marriage performed by the Catholic Church create illegitimate children? How do you explain 1.2 billion bastards? Clerical error? Will the bishop inform the parishioners of their illegitimate status? The Catholic Church considers all them bastards. What about other denominations? As one in possession of his baptismal certificate, I can attest that my mother's maiden name and father are both listed in the certificate, which seems to evidence that they are listed in the baptismal register and evidence of adulteration of my God-given character by the record keeper. Right, you took me from a child of God and, and you made me a bastard. I'm sure the Office of Chancellor has the authority to access and investigate the Register of Baptism to verify its own evidence to determine the inclusion of the parents of, ch of the child in the registration. Let's go look at the records and see how many times you may have done this. Had the Church filed the alternative solution offered in the same canon, 877 section 2, in all other cases the name of the baptized person is to be registered without any indication of the name of the father or of the parents. Psalm 68 5 would prevail. A father of the fatherless and judge of the widows, God in his holy habitation. 
we would have been children of the Father from the beginning had they not put your mom and dad's name on the damn certificate. If they weren't listed here, Delbert and Elsie weren't on there, then Robert Allen Radlewski would have been an orphan child and a son of the father from the beginning. And I got just the opposite. I got kicked out of the I, I got kicked out of the kingdom of heaven. Well, so did you, right? You were baptized into Christ's death, and at confirmation, you're supposed to have been resurrected into His kingdom. But somebody <laughs> didn't annotate the document so that it would then have to be sent to the uh, um, secretariat of the uh, Vatican City State. Yep. Wrong button. So, okay, Chancellor, the same rule can be found in the 1917 version of Canon Law, Canon 777, go figure, triple seven. So how, can, how long has it been the church's policy to consider all its members bastards? Is this why the parish asks for the birth certificate as part of the baptismal ceremony? Paperwork? Will you share this revelation in the weekly church bulletin, inform the apostolic signature, the Pope himself, or continue the conspiratorial concealment, misprison of crime of against humanity? Right? I'm saying you guys are guilty of a crime against humanity until you fix the damn records. Not mine only. 1.2 billion Catholics. Get busy. So far, we have not revealing the entire gospel, duty mandated by Christ, and contributing to the enforced disappearance of person by clerical error, resulting in the enslavement of mankind, neither of which seems to be in keeping with Christ's vision of his universal church. But wait, there's more. Even as the simplest task seems impossible to get right, such as the notation of the First Communion as part of the baptismal certificate, and this is where we talk about the backside. Where there's nothing here. So I'm not a full Christian initiate. With my own certificate as an example, I can attest to the lack of notation of communion on my certificate. It lists the baptism and confirmation. The book ends a full Christian initiation, but not Holy Communion. Therefore, by canon law and church record, I am not a full Christian initiate, not considered a member of the Catholic Church, just its subject. This same clerical omission would mean that all, that a priest is not lawfully holding his office in the holy orders. According to the sacramental record, he is never a full Christian initiate. Therefore, he is usurping an ecclesiastic office in violation of canon law and the church's court of record, and you will have to remove them from office immediately or correct everyone's records. His Holiness can invoke his papal authority to facilitate the correction. Get in the chair, Pope. Pope Francis. Get on the throne of Peter and give us an El Catherida. Is this the reason the Catholic Church considers priests as employees instead of citizens? Actually, they don't even consider them. They, they consider them self-employed. I, I, I had I had pulled some stuff off on this. That, um, they're like contractors. But the, the, considers them something other than citizens of the Holy See because they're not citizens of the Holy See. They have a, a driver's license just like you and I do. They're citizens of the United States of America, and that's why the Holy See cannot charge them for um, pedophilia. It's a they're they're citizens of the United States of America. You got to cry if you got a complaint against them. You're supposed to take it to the U.S. court. And if not there, if if then, because the U.S. court won't enforce its own law, then you would take it to the International Criminal Court in the Hague. Not the International Common Law Court, the International Criminal Court that was set up for crimes against humanity. If you believe it's a crime against humanity, you don't have to like it. It just is the way it is, and the way it is is this. They're not citizens of the Holy See, so it's not the Holy See's responsibility to um, correct them for pedophilia. That is a function of the government they're under, and they're under the same government you and I are. It's a color of law government, but they're not They're not in the Holy See. In fact, they're not really even... It, there's a great possibility they're not actually a priest because if you have to have all three of these 
notations to be a full Christian initiate before you can go on to the next level or the next order, the holy orders, which is another sacrament. You had to have these three, but your record doesn't show it. doesn't matter that you went through the ceremony. Your record doesn't show it. The court of record would say, no, you're not a full Christian initiate. Why? You got a blank. Oh, it's an error? Well, then fix the record, and then you will be. That's what we're trying to do right now. So I don't know that any priest, and therefore any bishops, all the way up to the Pope, cardinals or anybody who are necessarily um, actually properly holding their office, they're de facto, right? They're using color of law. They're not holding the office is a possibility, right? Because if their record's incorrect, they don't hold the office. They don't have the credentials to hold the office. And that's called usurping an office. And, you know, even in canon law, you can't usurp an office, especially an ecclesiastic office. Okay, so how about cardinals and bishops? Are they also usurpers violating canon law? Do they suffer from the same legal disability? Please investigate. In the struggle of good against evil, it seems godly inspired men created an infrastructure for the kingdom of heaven here on earth to be manifested at the time of God's choosing. We are suffering a civil death due to our recorded illegitimacy, and if a simple error is corrected in church records, including proper registration, this infrastructure can perform as it was intended as our new man emerge and God's children begin conforming the temporal order to the will of the Lord. So, by baptism, I share in the office of Christ, and I claim the right to defend my citizenship within the Holy See before a competent ecclesiastic form, and you, Chancellor, will see that my rights are vindicated. Canon 204. Christ's faithful are those who, since they were incorporated into Christ through baptism, are constituted the people of God. So that's anybody who's baptized, um, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Proper form, proper, they call it proper form, and proper material, I think, or something like that. Proper matter. And that would be water. Baptized with water, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? You, you, you are, technically, a Catholic. If you believe in the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, you're a Catholic, right? You're Catholic part of the universal church. So by baptism you also share in the office of Christ. And you're constituted the people of God. For this reason they participate in their own way in the priestly, prophetic, and kingly office of Christ. You participate in your own way in the priestly, prophetic office. Okay, so you're in the office of Christ. The office of Christ must be within the church. That's certainly within the Holy See. Right, right there. I'm in the Holy See. If I'm holding the office of Christ within the Holy See, I must be in the Holy See. Where's my passport? Where's my travel docs? They are called each according to his own, his or her particular condition to exercise the mission which God entrusted to the church to fulfill in the world. Be the lay apostle. The church established and ordered in the world as a society subsists in the Catholic Church governed by the successor, Peter and bishops in communion with him. The church established and ordered in the world as a society. What's a society? It's a nation. Right? The church. You're in the church. You're part of the nation. You got your own government. Christ faithful may lawfully Canon 222 or yeah 221. Christ faithful may lawfully vindicate and defend the rights they enjoy in the church before a competent ecclesiastic form in accordance with the law. That's what I'm invoking. I got the right to vindicate my rights. I have a right to be a citizen of the Holy See. And they're going to have to put it on paper that I'm not and put their name on it, swear to it. Otherwise, I am. I already claim it. I swear to it. As God is my witness, I am a citizen of the Holy See. 219. All Christ faithful have the right to immunity from any kind of coercion in choosing a state of life. <laughs> Bingo! I just chose mine. 
right? And we're being coerced into living in this godless society in, in a court where they won't let God in the courtroom. That's what the attorney told Roe. No, you can't bring God in the courtroom. I'm telling you what, if you were going to court and you want to go with them crazy ass people, get in there and bring God in the courtroom. All right? Just tell them you open this court in the name of the Lord Emmanuel, the Christ Jesus, Son of God. You can't do that. It's too late. I'm a vessel for the Holy Spirit. Every place I go, God comes. All right, how can God not be in this courtroom? Who are you to say God is in the courtroom? You're mentally ill. I think you need a freaking psych eval, right? Bailiff, arrest that judge. Get him in for a psych eval. He doesn't seem to think that God's in the courtroom. Canon 220. No one may unlawfully harm the good reputation which person enjoys or violate the right of any person to protect his or her privacy. Lawfully harm the good reputation. Well, by God, you made me illegitimate. That's unlawful. Or it's an error. Fix it. It's just an error. Don't fix it. It just became a crime against humanity and it's going to get fixed anyways, except you're going to go to prison. Those baptized are in full communion with the Catholic Church here on earth who are joined with Christ in his visible body through the bonds of profession of faith, sacraments of ecclesiastic and ecclesiastical governance. Profession of faith would be confirmation. All right, those baptized are in full communion with the Catholic Church here on earth who are joined with Christ in his visible body through the bonds of profession of faith, which that's part of confirmation. The sacraments and ecclesiastic goal governance. These clerical errors and omissions have harmed my good name and God given character, and you will set the record straight by means made available to you. Each of us has a canonical juridical person in need of registration with the government of the Vatican City State. The registration shall be acknowledged by nation states under international law and compel them to register the same as a public civil legal personality and in our civil death we entered in at birth further witness that baptism into Christ's death because in the civil society they don't consider your marriage certificate a vital record but they certainly consider fetal deaths deaths and birth records as vital records how many fetal deaths do you think they had See, they want to, I was talking to Roe about this yesterday. They don't want you to see that record, but you could put in a FOIA request and ask for how, for the number of records in the fetal death index in the county. And I think they'd have to give you that. Because, again, if they don't give you something on a, a FOIA, you're supposed to be able to put in a federal, um, take in a federal court. It's one of the things they're supposed to do. It's part of an act. So, I'll leave it with you to make the bishop aware of the situation and initiate the correction of the errors, omission, sacramental records, blah, 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 blah. Until then, the hierarchy of the diocese subject to find themselves as defendants on a civil rights hate crime complaint, as well as parties of interest on an information submitted to the International Criminal Court. And I will do it. This, my solemn asseveration in believing the foregoing to be true. From the Office of Christ. And so I also sent a copy to the this is the uh, the nuncio for the United States. I believe it's His Excellency, His Eminence, or His Excellency. I believe it's His Excellency because that's what I used on my thing I sent to him. So, okay, so I sent this to this went in the mail yesterday, Wednesday. I haven't got any phone calls yet. So and this is Thursday in the afternoon. Um, so I sent this out, and then I cc'd the Archbishop and let me go find that copy and we'll read that real quick all right so this was a short little thing I put together for the nuncio and then gave him a copy of what I sent to the Chancellor found on a website that is not a product of the Holy See it's just kind of a little funny that was at the bottom of their website is says a website that is not a product of the Holy See on it and then but it says in this right up on the um, apostolic nunicature of, to the United States that apostolic nuncios like secular ambassador who serve their government and national citizens, citizenry serve the Roman Catholic people of God beautiful so in that case excellency 
as I am one of the Roman Catholics you serve, let me begin by thanking you for your service. And I gratefully acknowledge and accept your oath, vow, or promise. Thank you. I accept your oath, your vow, your promise. To serve the Roman Catholic people of God. I'm one of them. I am Robert Allen, son of God, here is one of his people, and inform your conscience that the record-keeping procedures of the Catholic Church has resulted in 1.2 billion bastard subjects of the Church, maybe as few as two living members fully vested as bishops. It would be easier to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of the Virgin Mary, which is part of the secrets of Fatima that everybody wants to have done. There's a chance that just the, the two popes have got their records correct, correct, corrected so that you know, these things we just talked about aren't errors on their records. But if you don't put the Holy Communion in the record, then technically you're not a priest. And if you're not a priest, you couldn't have become a bishop. If you weren't a bishop, well, you could become a cardinal, but almost all cardinals are bishops today. A cardinal is supposed to be a prince of the church. It has nothing, it could be a secular office as far as that goes. It's really what a lay apostle is going to be. You're going to be just like a cardinal. Um... So anyways, it could just be these two. And, and so in the secret of Fatima, all the bishops and the Pope were supposed to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And when this happened, Russia would become immediately consecrated and become the shining light of Christianity and, and bring Christianity back to, uh, to reign upon the earth. There you go. And so instead of trying to get, you know, 2,000, 3,000, I don't know how, know how many bishops there are, to get their agreement, if there's only two, and they're the only two that really know what's going on, they could just go ahead and do it. And back in October of last year, they brought the statue of the Virgin Mary from Fatima to Vatican City so that the Pope, both, could be there to consecrate the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I don't know what they said while they're standing there. You know, I don't know if they had microphones on, but all I got to do is mention the word Russia. The two of them, boom. If they're the only two loving bishops, whatever needed to be done f to fulfill the uh, the needs of Fatima have just been done. I have included a copy of an information I sent to my local diocese, including a copy of my sacramental record that evidences errors and omissions that are the root cause of my civil death and being baptized in. The, the, in the Christ's death, demanding that my divine gift of resurrection be properly recorded. All right, that was a that's a gift from God. All right, I'm being denied my gift, my divine gift, my, part of my inheritance from the Creator. I'm being denied because you guys won't freaking fix your records. The officers of the church have perpetuated the enforced disappearance of persons for centuries, according to a canon lawyer. Washington State at the Archdiocese of Seattle by assuming the parents are married while executing an instrument in a matter causing the, dis the appearance of illegitimacy on the record. And there we go. Child of unmarried mother. The mother's name. And the father's name. In all other cases other than unmarried mother the name of the baptized person is to be registered without any indi without any indication of the name of the father or of the parents. If it's on there, the child's illegitimate by their law. The result is an ongoing custom that is contrary to divine law and must be stopped, and the error is corrected by the administration of justice. Custom, which is contrary to divine law, can acquire the force of law. I claim my office within the Holy See as described in the Pontifical Council for the Lady. Right? Special office, sui juris, of the laity should be set up within the Holy See. In accordance with Pope Francis' apostolic letter issued motu proprio on the jurisdiction of the judicial authority of Vatican City State and criminal matters, it seems our person needs to be listed in the registry of canonical juridical persons kept by the government of the Vatican City State. And the great thing is that the, the nuncio was holding this office, I believe he was the Secretary of State, so I think it would be for the government of Vatican City State. I ask that you see to the immediate perfection of my status and my instruments of office be delivered to for my use. 
Any more would be repeating what I have already informed the local diocese of, but I leave you with a message for His Holiness Pope Francis. Please tell him the children of God wish to conform the temporal order to the will of the Lord by returning to his kingdom. And of course, I mean the Lord's kingdom. To the kingdom of heaven and conform the temporal order to his will by getting a system back to where if you're going to bring a complaint against somebody, you need to swear to it. And if you bring a complaint against somebody and, and it's found that you're incorrect, that maybe you have lied, well, that's called malicious prosecution and you're going to go to jail. And just like that, this system of prosecution ends. When the person bringing the prosecution faces jail time for being incorrect, they'll quit bringing the cases. What we need to do is make them try us in the jurisdiction we want to be part of. Because we have a right to choose our jurisdiction, your state of life. Right? I don't want to choose the state of Michigan anymore. Everybody here is a usurper of the office. And I don't like the nation state because they don't want to enforce their hate crimes. Right? So I'm going to go to the Vatican City state. That's the state I'm choosing in the Holy See. Okay, i got one more thing to show you here. Hang on a second. Okay, a little bit on uh, juridical personalities. Uh, that what, which pertains to the artificial, as distinct from human persons. Canon 114. Aggregates of persons or of things which are directed to the purpose befitting the church's mission, which transcends the purpose of the individuals, are constituted juridical persons transcends the purpose of the individual. How do you transcend the purpose of the individual? Sounds really spiritual to me. They're considered juridical persons, either by provisions of law itself or by special concession given in the form of a decree by the competent authority. So we're just trying to get this decree that says, hey, we're part of the lay apostolate, a Christi Fidels, Fidels, um, because the purpose uh, indicated in number one are understood to be those which concern works of piety, the, the apostolate, or of charity, whether spiritual or temporal. Right. So if you're a lay apostle, you should be construed, constituted into a juridical person. Again, not you. Right? You're, you're, you're a mortal living spirit, creating the image of God here as one of his people. But your body is uh, your natural person. You got a natural person and an artificial person. Natural person is your body. Your artificial person is your all capital letter name on a piece of paper, which encompasses the estate that you were left by God under that name. And they're keeping you away from that because now that you are the age of majority, you should have access to your estate, but they're not giving it to you. Either they're making you have an enforced disappearance, like you're a decedent or you're under some kind of disability and therefore you need to have an attorney represent you. If you go to a court case today in a state court, uh, that's for a foreclosure, chances are you're going to find yourself listed as the defendant, or excuse me, as the attorney for the defendant. Right? The, and the plaintiff isn't a bank. If you just take it just the way you see it in the plaintiff box and you go try to find a certificate of authority, certificate of existence, certificate of good standing for this supposed corporation, it doesn't exist. Because the plaintiff is a fictitious entity. It's not even a company. It's just letters on paper. They don't have any paperwork. It was never constituted a freaking corporation. Now, it may be somebody's DBA doing business as, but it's certainly not a banking corporation registered with the Secretary of State the way it's supposed to be. And these are all, you know, shit that happens with these uh, persons. So we're trying to get our person, since we have this person, we got a natural person and an artificial person, to get them the, a particular status that says leave them alone, it's church property. And your body should be the temple to the Holy Spirit. Kind of hard to understand. They are a new creation, new men and women, incorporated into Christ through grace of baptism, called to grow in holiness as Christi Fetals, sharers in their own way in the threefold office, there is an office again, priestly, prophetic, kingly. The threefold office of Christ. It, and again, it would seem very opportune that this special office, sui juris, of the laity, should be set up within the Holy See. 
So what does sui juris mean? In civil law, the phrase sui juris indicates legal competence, the capacity to manage one's own affairs. It also indicates an entity that is capable of suing and or being sued in a legal proceeding in its own name without the need of an ad litem, without the need of representation. So you never get sued in your name. If you walk into court and you go look at the docket sheet, for the court case is going on. In my case, it would say Ritluski, comma, Robert Allen. It wouldn't say Robert Allen Ritluski. Ritluski, comma, Robert Allen. It's a fictitious entity that the court system set up as part of this illegitimacy because since you're illegitimate, they, they gave you some guardians, um, almost like an adoption, and they gave the adoptive child a fictitious name to protect him in the paperwork and they put his real name in an envelope and they put it in the court case. And they don't want to show it to you. Right? The name they have for you for me, I, I can't so I can't do a legal proceeding in my name, Robert Allen Rutluski, because they don't know who it is. Rutluski Robert Allen, that's the jurisdiction that's the entity that the court that they want you to go into has jurisdiction over. They don't have jurisdiction over you in your own name. Which is why we need to become sui jurors, because then we will be in our own name. They only have jurisdiction over Rutluski, comma, Robert Allen. They took the one and broke it in two. What will you do when you know you've been become two? You're try to become one again. It, so back to sui juris, it also relates to custom, customary unique rights afforded to an individual unequal and exceptional per feudal prerogative legal structures. In other words, you're a knight of the church. Right? You're an officer of the government of the Christian nation. So, you know, this thing about when they say, are you a sovereign citizen? You know, I, I've said this for quite some time, but I don't know if I ever said it on a call like this, but okay, they ever say, well, you, you act like one of them sovereign citizens. You say, well, if you mean that I'm the sovereign of a nation of one, this territory here that God gave me, and a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, then you're absolutely correct. And my question is, are you? Or are you an enemy of God? Absolutely, I'm a sovereign citizen. I am the sovereign of a nation of one. Right? The territorial limits of my nation is the outside of my skin. Anything within that is my jurisdiction. As long as I'm not bothering anybody by God's law, then they have no reason to bring any claim against me. So you're, having this sui juris legal personality gives you this unequal and exceptional per, per feudal prerogative legal structure. The king likes you. All right, the king of kings says, ah, you're a good man, I'll make you one of my kings. Good deal. You just became a king in the church, prince of the church. Take the church back, and we're going to go kick out the frickin' Freemasons that are in the church, or in the Catholic church, or all over the place, right? But the great thing is, ipso facto, any Christian, baptized Christian, who becomes a Freemason is ipso facto excommunicated from the church. And all we need to do is get the public memorial to the event. In other words, do the paperwork, because this is all spiritual. But you can get the paperwork, and you have them cast out of the kingdom of heaven. Because while you're waiting for the kingdom of heaven, it's already here. Jesus said, the law and the prophets ended with John the Baptist, and since then it's been the kingdom of heaven. So, what we need to do is throw the tares out. And there was a story some time ago, and I don't know who told me this, or, you know, it's, I don't even know if it's uh, um, patriot mythology, but a guy wanted out of the system, and he knew the church was somehow involved, and so he went to see the uh, archbishop, and he said he wanted out of the system. The archbishop said, you really don't want that. He said, yes, I do, I really want out. You really don't want to be out of the system. Yes, I want out of the system. I want out. Next day, didn't have a bank account, driver's license, didn't have anything. He didn't exist anymore. He was out. Right? He was cast out of the kingdom of heaven. 
That's what he wanted. He wanted out of the kingdom of heaven, so he was let out. Right now you're a subject within the kingdom of heaven. You're not a member of the church in the kingdom of heaven, so you don't have the rights of the church in the kingdom of heaven. And we're over here in these little thiefdoms where they're not letting us bring our complaint to the right jurisdiction. And it doesn't seem to matter where you go to, wherever there's an attorney involved, whether it be in the church, excuse me, or in the society, right? They just lie, cheat, and steal, right? They're, they're Freemasons. So we're going to find out what's going on with these uh, canon lawyers. They're going to get a wake-up call um, very, very soon. So then uh, there's two kinds of juridic persons. Public juridic persons are aggregates of persons or of things which are established by competent ecclesiastic authority so that within the limits allotted to them, blah, 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 blah. So I think that this public juridic person is going to, going to be your all capital letter name. Going into the, right now it's in this kitty over here, you're going to put in this other kitty that's under, under the church's jurisdiction. But you're also going to get a private juridical person are given this personality only when special decree by competent authority expressly granting it. That's what we're lacking. We don't have a private juridical person registered yet. So, okay. Hang on. Okay. So, if you could, um, please do donate. I need to pay rent and bills like everybody else, and it would really help if, uh, if you can help me out. By PayPal, it would be to ashleyritlewski at gmail.com. That's A-S-H-L-E-Y-R-Y-T-L-E-W-S-K-I at gmail.com. That's the PayPal name. Or by mail to myself, Robert Ritlewski. One of my many names. My dog calls me Wolf. Robert Ritlewski, 10955 14 Mile Road, Rockford, Michigan, 49341. And God bless you ahead of time. Thank you very much. And one more thing to show you here. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this. Um, there's a guy named Kim Clement. I never heard of him at all until just recently when I got in my uh, YouTube, you know, things you may be interested in watching. I watch a lot of stuff on the church and law and all and, and so forth and so on, and this came up. And on the 19th of April, 2014, Kim Clement, who's a fairly well-known um, Christian evangelist, um, you know, he does it in his own way, but he also does a lot of prophecy stuff. He came up with this prophecy. So you can find it online. I'm not going to read the whole thing. King Clement prophesized on April 19th from the den. He said, uh, and I have chosen Pope Francis as one of the voices that will speak, and he will command, and they will try to assassinate him three times. They will try within to damage him. Right? This is him saying these are the words of the Lord. There will be a change in the entire system. I will make a change for what Martin Luther did 500 years ago. God's Spirit says, so it shall be that this man shall pronounce that as well as there shall be fire, there shall ignite in the southern part of America. There shall be criminals, there shall be criminals that shall be brought to justice. And God says, this man shall change laws and there will be creeds that will come forth and the Catholic people will rejoice and they shall smile again for I will fill them with light. I'm going to change some laws. Well, that's what I'm asking them to do. It's wonderful. right? And, and bring forth uh, some creeds. How about bringing forth the gospel? So, we'll see what happens. But, uh, again, this was mainly, I, I like to do this as a I make it as public as possible for the church. If you know anybody in the church, please ask them to look at this, to watch it. If you know anybody who's a canon lawyer, to watch it. If you know any of these people, might be part of it to watch it, because the next place after this is going to be to have to take them to the International Criminal Court, because their record keeping is what's causing this problem. And it isn't just the Catholic Church. I'm sure it's the same in all churches that well, it's it's the it's certainly the same with the baptism or with the marriage certificates and the birth certificates that we're all considered bastards 
And so we need to be going to our church leaders, if nothing else, because there's an agency that's part of the Department of Justice that's the Community Relations Service or something like that that's supposed to um, work with community groups about hate crimes and, and right now you're you're the victim of a hate crime whether they come to your door or not you're the victim of a hate crime because the system made you a bastard from the beginning made you an illegitimate child from the beginning and they're keeping you under a form of civil disability um, where you always have this guardian they're always looking over your estate uh, these estates have been set up because we're supposed to live in a system where everything is paid for you go and get what you need and you know for that you perfect your skills and you give it back for free That's what we should be doing uh, we're a long ways from that but the system is there to do it we just need to take the system over and the, the first way to do that is get it so that they can't bring a charge against you without swearing to it and then we can conform the temporal order to the will of the Lord by saying, hey, you can't do that anymore. That's a hate crime. You have to stop. So, okay. Uh, God bless everybody and have a great day. Talk soon. See ya.